Hello, hello again and welcome to another tutorial and this time it will be a little special. Uh, I And I want to show you how to de-click a Leica Summicron R. It's the 50mm and the Aperture 2. Now this lens <coughs> actually missed the front name plate name ring. But uh, as a lens, it actually works pretty good. What um, what I want to show you is how to de-click the, as you can hear, when change in the aperture. Hmm. Yeah, when uh, somebody wants to use it when you're making films or video, it uh, should be silent. So, let's see what we can do. Zoom out. See, uh, we need some tools, some flathead screwdrivers and a crosshead screwdrivers. Uh, this is a modified uh, PH00, which I have just take off the very pointed tip. So it fits perfect in the screw. Now a uh, one point eight millimeter flathead screw driver, and uh, in this case a uh, two point four millimeter. Uh, not really anything special, but a good quality screwdriver. A tweezers also very handy, and then we need some pliers. We need a wire cutter. This is a backhoe. Uh, something good and uh, this is the uh, a flat plier and a round uh, tip plier it's all from Knipex which I like um, I think it's pretty good quality we also need some super glue this is the gel um, I will use in this case because it's easier to to use a dentist tool with pointed tips is also very handy. Now to the subject. Um, to make this, uh, I mean to de-click this, I want to take out the steel ball and the small spring. And it sits around here. Here you have the name. And here I just set a mark so I should remember. But it says here. I mean, actually, some way under here, beside the screw, uh, somewhere here, uh, there is uh, the steel ball and the the small spring that actually make the click uh, when turning the aperture ring. So, uh, how to actually de-click it? Yeah, well, I could actually just take out the steel ball and the spring. And that's it. Hmm. Yeah. But no. It doesn't work as it should. Because the the aperture will simply close again. Because of another spring in here. Uh, so what to do about it? Well. I found out by de-clicking de other. Like there are lenses. That a small piece of plate sheet which I have cut out and uh, simply make a shape like this one here there there then a bending a bending a bending another bending and that's it so it should be a, a bit open here so it's also bent over here so that's the shape of the the small piece of metal I will I will uh, put into my lens and de-click it. In all, it's uh, 21.6 millimeters long, and uh, the width is uh, one millimeter, and the thickness of the plate is 0 0.5 millimeter. And uh, well, you could use a piece of thing from an old camera or 
um, maybe you go to the hardware store and try to find something that could be useful so uh, but let's jump into the lens and see what we can do see there are six screws around here on the mount there 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 and there and the last one here but before taking out the mount there are three screws around here in the inner thin plate here there there and the last one is there so uh, but before could do so well set the aperture ring to 16 all the way as long as it can there because it will make it much easier to take out the thin plate around here so the uh, using my 1.8 millimeter screwdriver uh, is it should be easy to unscrew the very tiny screw which you can see here it's very tiny and of course it should come in again all three the thin plate around the back lens group here can only be placed one I mean it can only sit correct so by lifting it up and then the reason I also uh, should do it and set it to near end it will make it much easier to take it out so do it again oh the focus okay yeah but here it is and put it aside now the um, the mount will come off but uh, here you can see part of it somewhere here it's the thing I would like to um, what do you say uh, tighten to I mean get it into the the aperture that sits here when you see when you I move it this end here should be connected to the pin here by this uh, tiny piece of sheet metal now over the uh, six screws and before I do so uh, I just place a mark here it will make it easier for you to uh, see because normally the lens would have a the red dot the Leica dot here and it uh, should be in line with the uh, red dot here when you attach the lens to the camera but uh, since it's an old lens uh, it, there isn't any red dot here so uh, but just to remember and the springs it's near to this screw here so just uh, be aware of it now unscrew the tiny screws is that length not really special but um, take this as the last screw it will say the one with the spring under so you can also take the other screws around here so and we are almost there oh for this screw the reason is uh, why I uh, will uh, let this screw be the last one it's because when unscrew this the spring and the steel ball will probably pop out probably not 
It could be, but then you only have one screw to take care of. So by holding the mount, press it down, you can unscrew the last screw. And uh, you will not need the screwdriver anymore in this case. So just sit, let the screw sit on the screwdriver. It will make it easier for you when you assemble it again. Now, gently, you see here, there's some pressure on it. It's because of the spring and the steel ball. So one can just lift up the mount straight up. And there you see all the small kind of notch or whatever it calls holes not really hole <laughs> um, but that is actually the the well kind of a hole that makes the the click noise and here is the steel ball really tiny get rid of this and uh, we also need to take out the little spring if not if you think okay I can just do it uh, taking out the st spring and the steel ball hmm. well the spring fall off. <laughs> spring away <laughs> jump away okay well I will not eat it need it <clears throat> doesn't really matter to me well so we are inside the lens on the back here so why could I not just uh, get rid of the spring and the steel ball well you could but the reason is if you open the aperture and full open the spring I mean the tension of the of the uh, of the spring in here will simply move the aperture ring back until aperture 16 and of course there is some dirt and sheet on shit on here so a little more friction on it but if you see here I can open by pulling the screw here or the other one simply open the aperture but it will flip back to close again because there is a uh, spring wire in here that I need to cut away I will say it's a non um, I will I will I mean I will not use this lens to a, a um, as a on a Leica camera a film camera so uh, I can just get rid of the spring in here but you will see it will it has uh, enough if not enough uh, strength in the spring to simply close the aperture so if if everything was clean you would and use it on film or video it will simply just go back itself so hmm how good is that now to to get to the the real point here I will simply take up the the two screws one on each side uh, that can take the whole uh, assembly out for the uh, aperture click um, I mean the aperture moving mechanism I don't know what it calls <laughs> it doesn't matter you know I think you know what I mean when I take it out So, and now <coughs> things are just to take out. There is a fork here that will be connected to the plate in here, which is the connection to the actual aperture mechanism. There is a lot of dirt here, actually it's really, really dry, so it makes a lot of friction. So I could just clean it so it will make it smooth and easy to move 
Now, the point is that I want to connect this pin here all the way over to here and make it as a rigid part that moves the whole thing. So uh, I found out, okay, um, I could not just attach it here and have it all here, all the way over here and bend it place into position. But um, I need to go around so it goes from there all the way over here, bend the plate here, and then go around the pin here, all the way around to the uh, other side here, as I uh, as I wrote in the in this drawing here. There, 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 there. Okay, there. So therefore, um, I simply just use my pliers and uh, just do it by without measuring. I mean, I could measure it, but uh, it will just be something like that, 2.2 millimeter doesn't really do that much but um, it's uh, easy to do so there I mean I could just put it on here and simply measure it <coughs> I, if I do not have a uh, measure tool, I can just put it on here, all the way in here, come on focus, so there, and simply bend the sheet metal <clears throat> and now it goes all the way over here and there will be another bend of the metal it would be something like there There could be some small adjustment, <clears throat> but bend it up again. Put it on here. Mm -hmm. So. And then move the uh, the pin here, all the way over here. Let's see is if it's correct. So, and then move this around here. Oh, there. Yeah, it can be a little tricky, but uh, we'll make it. Oh, 
I think it a machine could you do this much better if it was programmed to do it and then one could make a lot of those uh, tiny spring now <clears throat> then I can uh, just move it around there so it is there the point is that it is as uh, close to the to the point as possible I mean the, it doesn't do anything wrong the small amount of metal that is here so uh, I can just put it around I mean the whole thing here the whole assembly here will just move as it was one part so we are almost there and then I can just bend the metal around here the last corner and simply cut it with my uh, wire cutter something like there and simply bent the whole thing into place and uh, it will not sit there alone so it's therefore I need to um, to use some super glue to fix it into the correct place so it will stay there but it's not that hard to 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 make that small modifying uh, modification <laughs> so and it's it's hmm. So it sit there, and so I can just uh, the rest of the part here. So I just need to bend it a little more, so it will stay uh, there as it should. So, and then uh, fix it with some kind of small amount of super glue. Uh, I use the gel uh, in this case. So there, and I could also do it under here just to to fix it. So it will stay there. there take care of there's not uh, coming uh, any glue on top of here it will uh, probably get the, the aperture um, part this aperture part here to get stuck so it will not at all move <laughs> and that's not what we actually want a little bit more and uh, 
something was not correct into place here. It's just like acting as a, a dentist. <laughs> so it should take only two seconds to dry, but uh, in some cases I think it goes a bit longer. Don't know why, but. So it is. It should be pretty fast, <laughs> this uh, glue. Now I could just, uh, let's see, use some some uh, lighter fluid to just clean the uh, the parts here. So it will run smooth and, and good. Okay, I see. I mean, one could actually just, if it's too, it runs too uh, light, one could just add a little uh, super glue or something, grease, that will make the the aperture ring more run more stiff I mean more tight but it depends on who use the the actual lens so it's there I would guess so just add a little more here So, so it's. I think it will be okay. And then I can just put it into the lens again. But no, not yet. Because maybe you remember, I said, well, <coughs> if I. Uh, move the aperture ring this one will flip back again so I have to I have to take out this uh, spring that sits in here as you see it will go from here to all the way over to the other side on the aperture uh, assembly in here so I simply take out this uh, spring and the small uh, screw here <coughs> they have used some thread lock there's a uh, screw that holds the thing in place and you can see they have used a lot of thread lock so the spring will still be attached to it so I take out the small spring here, I mean the small screw, and simply lift out this uh, spring here, as you can see. So I can simply move the aperture. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, it's made in good quality. Now I will simply make a real damage, so I simply cut out the the tiny spring here because I will not use the lens for a Leica camera. So cut away. Wow! See that is a murder to a lens, <laughs> but it isn't. So I can close the aperture and then add my. Um, aperture ring assembly here and put the, the fork in here into correct place you see the pin there and the fork simply put it in and now 
you see I can move my aperture without any resistance and if I um, or when I put in the two screws there is one on each side those here simply put them in don't tighten too much I think they will break easily if you tighten too much so and the other side so come in little fellow so and now it sits there so I have a fully manual aperture on this system and uh, that's actually that very easy where's the aperture 16 here put the ring on remember the two notches there and there and then the two pin on each side so and now my aperture is actually working as it should because the spring is not in there anymore and of course I will not add the spring on the steel ball so I will simply just put the the mount on again very easy and uh, hopefully it will work pretty good I think so where's my mark there Well, one could add a little, a little uh, oil or something here, and I could just, uh, I could just add a little lighter fluid and simply dry it here. So, and so it is, on with those parts here, and on with the, um, with the mount. Remember how it sits, the red dot should sit here, against with the red dot here, and so put it on, find the small screw holes and then I will also because uh, maybe this lens will be used a lot for video I will also add a little thread lock lock tight 222 uh, which is the purple one I mean the soft one just a tiny amount of that and simply put it in hmm. and do it with all six screws oh I could have used a JIS uh, screwdriver a zero zero but I prefer actually my my uh, modified um, pH zero zero it uh, to me it simply works better but well that's just the way I think it should work see <laughs> that's good And it's actually quite easy and it will the uh, this uh, the way I show it here will actually works many years because everything is put into place and will not at all move 
I mean it cannot move anyway. So put in the um, the tiny right round plate here. Put the aperture to 16 or just set it to near end. Uh, and then it will be much easier to put in the plate here. But the aperture should not stay on 16. I mean uh, more than 16. It should be in line with 16. Because then the holes in this uh, round plate is uh, in correct place. So add the tiny small screws in here. And then we are almost there. So in my opinion this is the correct way of doing a real D-click instead of just taking out the steel bowl in the spring. Uh, you also need to demolish the lens by taking out the uh, the small uh, piano wire spring in here in the aperture. So uh, that was actually that. So now the lens is actually noise free and ready to use with the a video camera or film camera. So that was actually all for me. So hope you enjoy the content and can use it to something. So that's all. Bye bye.